Okay, good. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at uh, 6.04 on Monday, November 6th. Um, and we do have a few adjustments to the agenda uh, for timing-wise. Uh, we want to move 7-1. 7, 3, and 8, 1 to before the celebration of learning so that those folks will be able to participate in the, um, the next uh, Granville, uh, Hancock Granville School Board meeting. Um, and then uh, Robert has requested to add in um, probably 8, 5 uh, temperature sensor sensors um, for the high school. Is there any other additions or adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Uh, okay, we look for a motion to approve the minutes from Monday, October 2nd, 2023. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Are, is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Cynthia say I. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, okay, do we have any public comment? Is there any public on? No? Okay. Do we have any board comment? Okay. Then we're going to move right on to the superintendent's report. Uh, so you have my report in hand. <clears throat> we, I, we did have a nice discussion at dinner last Monday uh, in place of the full board retreat. I think coming out of that, uh, Amy, Bill, thanks for being there. Um, I think coming out of that, the full board is going to be taking and creating a committee that will be working on draft goals for the full board, and we'll go about that work as a committee for 23-24 with hopefully... Um, the full board being able to review those and, and look to adopt them in December would be my, my timeline. It's tight, but I think that that's what we should be pushing for. Um, and then uh, I also, uh, it, you know, Tara will certainly mention this. You're going to see it in the budget. Uh, I mentioned this um, to some board members last week at the retreat is that uh, the insurance rates, uh, we received those from um, the statewide bargain plan. And medical insurance is looking that it's going to be about 16.4%. Uh, we have budgeted uh, in your last draft 13. Um, and so um, you're going to see some of those impacts in this next draft of your budget. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. The Also, I wanted to mention uh, to the board, folks heard me talk about the small schools grant going away. Um, as part of the new ed funding, uh, the, the cost equity weighted model. Um, they do weight small school students more. You know, we're waiting to see what all those final numbers are going to be in regards to what our weighted average daily membership number is. And remember, before we would get our equalized pupils, there's this weighted model now that's going to replace equalized pupils. The initial projections that we've been receiving, the last one was in August, shows that I believe that if that number stays true, it should offset the difference of not having that revenue stream. Meaning that our divisor is going to increase pretty significantly around the weighted pupils, which should then result in our cost per pupil being fairly consistent in regards to like if we had had that offsetting small schools revenue. Um, you'll get all that information at the next budget draft uh -huh. um, in December. We have none of that data yet. Yeah, it's upsetting that five years ago when we merged, that was the carrot. If you merge, you'll get to keep your small school grant. That was not even five years ago. The, um, no, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Frustrating. Um, and the... The other thing that you know we'll be following really closely um, is the yield. And the good news for our district here is we get to dial those numbers all in really tight before we go yeah. to adopting our budget. 
Um, it's a really uncertain time, I, I would say, where I sit right now is for some of our districts that need to be adopting budgets by the middle of January, mm. You're like fully adopting. Um, and I'm just worried about having all that data in a manner that I feel really good about it, specifically that weighted pupil number, because that's a new one um, that's in front of us. <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to share that with the board, but know that we're following it really closely. Um, and then I would say I have heard no updates. I, I have a soup meeting on Friday in regards to where the state board is uh, in regards to a new secretary. So I think I'll get an update on Friday, um, and then I'll be able to report that out afterwards. I'll take any questions folks may have. Um, just a comment on your working with Tri-Valley to oh, yeah, enhance yeah. our um, travel options so that kids from um, Randville, Hancock can participate and uh, get home safely. And I just think that's, that's it's, it's great for the kids and it's also great for us to be able to provide that level of service to keep the kids with us. So uh, I really like that. And my sense is Tri-Valley is, is, is trying to help. To, as well as uh, yeah, I, I found it to be a really great partner with trying yeah. to support needs that we have <laughs> after school um, sp specifically late runs um, but they got a but you know I think we're still trying to you know we were able to, to strike this partnership but I think there's some system aspects around scheduling and things that we can do to to make even better use of this uh, meaning Specifically, a midday run that we have going on between our middle and high school. I don't think we're really capitalizing on that the way we could be yet. Uh, but certainly, it's filled a void. We're down a bus driver still in Bethel, and it's filled a void to help us with tuition students getting to the high school, into the middle school from Rochester. Um, and you know, we have students utilizing it after school for for late runs after doing after school activities. So, yeah, it's been good, and they definitely have been been great at trying to work around our schedule. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions for our superintendent? Okay, then let's move on to the business manager's report. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, which outlines what's happening in the business office throughout the month of November. Sorry, I got to change the date there. So it's October <laughs> important dates. Um, auditors have wrapped up um, in our office. They will be coming back either this week or next week to complete our federal single audits for the supervisory union. But otherwise, they're working on the financial statements for all the districts. So I will be seeing those soon. And then if there's any questions on any of that, um, otherwise, I'll Come back when we talk about the budget. Uh, I had a question. Uh, 11 1 allowable tuition report provided by the AOE. So, is that um, a number that has been provided to us of what the, the allowable tuition rate, which they haven't provided to us yet still, is um, the allowable rate for the prior year of fiscal year 23. So, okay. that's the, the bill back if it's within the 3%. Okay. So we but they've not provided that yet. Nope. Mm. Okay. All right, is there any uh, further questions for Tara on her report? Okay, great. Well, then let's move on to the draft budget. So I'll start um, just giving updates as to what changed um, in draft two of the support staff. Jamie mentioned we did receive the health insurance rates from behind. So I have increased um, all the rates to reflect that increase, but also we just wrapped up open enrollment. So if you had any of your staff that needed to change their health plans, dental care, dental plans, anything of that nature, that's also reflected here in the strap two of the student support budget. And I also added FICA, which I normally include in the benefits, and I didn't have that in draft one. So that's also been added here as well. And then draft the first draft of your general education, I'll let Lindy speak to the actual staff. But again, that's based on the staff that you have in place today. 
um, and what their current salary and benefits are with the projections for fiscal year 25. <coughs> Yeah, so for our general education um, staffing, this uh, teacher keeps our classroom teacher staffing the same. Obviously, we weren't able to fill one position. This is with the idea that we would still fill one classroom teaching position for next school year. Because um, when you look at the balancing of numbers, that's what's best instructionally. Um, the other thing that I'll note is originally when we proposed our music uh, programming last year we said 0.6 we ended up cutting that to 0.4 but keeping our instrumental lesson partnership mm -hmm. okay. with our summer for music instructor instructors because that has been a great ongoing partnership to keep as a contracted service so it still keeps our programming musically for students as is now um, so they have general music and then students four through six can take <coughs> instrumental lessons but that will be in a different part of um, our budget next month and then that should keep everything about the same. World language is up. And world language is up, yes. We increased it. Ho hoping to attract someone for that position. Mm -hmm. And then in student support, it's um, essentially the same. The big thing, your, big, your budget driver there are really two things. I think you probably talked about this last month. Mm -hmm. It's making certain we get all the math intervention covered and completely in the local budget. We had done part of that last year. This is the last remaining piece of that from ESSER. And then it's also the school-based clinician. Which was also funded. Yes. Um, by, yeah. by ESSER. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a little nervous that, you know, because there's so much unknown with um, yield, with with our weighted, and um, you know, live in small schools, and um, you know, uh, we we need to educate our kids though, in the in the manner that they need to be educated. So it's it's, it's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Um, yeah, and I think the direct, you know, I I'd, I'd like to say I don't want to see a a large increase. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have every component of your budget next month, okay. which means everything, okay. all line items. Um, and this, thus far, what I've really said to principals is, let's put out <coughs> everything you feel like you really, really need. Okay. That's been our attack this, this year. Um, and, you know, as we're putting, you know, I, I feel like it's like, it's like an art piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like every year, that's mm -hmm. what the budget is, and we build it up as we go, and I feel like next month, you know, you get the full narrative around the expenditure side. Yeah. Uh, early in December, we probably will still be trying to dial in what all those other numbers are. Yeah. Um, but we'll have the full expenditure side. And then from there, you'll get to really see what does that mean overall as your bottom line. Yeah, okay. Um, and then you know what we'll be looking for you at that point is to give us a better sense of where are you comfortable on the expenditure side got it okay because then we'll come back in january with a tighter budget uh, okay. based on you know priorities mm -hmm. you know principals are creating priority lists yep. thus far what they've been looking like whatever they're like that they felt like it was going to create the strongest programming for them next year that has all been included in budgets this year Great. we have not we have not at our level stopped that, uh, meaning like question that. I've mm -hmm. said to principals, put forward everything that you think you need to make the system run as, as effective as you think you can. And then, but you know, knowing that folks are going to be prioritizing those things and knowing that there's going to probably be some places where we're going to have to tighten our belts. Okay. And that's, that's great to know what the progression of this mm -hmm. is. Great. Does anybody have any questions for uh, Lindy or Tara? Yes. Go ahead. First, on regular education, um, does that in the proposed FY25 regular education budget include uh, the salary increases? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we, and we're not, and, and we're not cutting any level of service 
Because so last year we would have budgeted for some teachers we've hired new yep. for a few positions, right? And so the number we used last year, because we didn't know we were going to be hiring for new positions, could have been higher mm -hmm. than yep. the people we hired, right? And these are all salary and benefits. So it includes salary and benefits, and it's really an adjusting of the budget rather than staffing levels, levels of support. It's adjusting uh, of the, program the initiatives. Actuals. We're not cutting. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. correct. Okay. Uh, same question on music. Looks like it's up 13K, but we were down 0 0.2 uh, FTE. So again, that's a, a budget adjustment rather than a diminution of service. It's, uh, music's really important. We want to keep that going. And so we are keeping it going, um, the, the level of service. Yes. Okay, well, that's... Um, now, these are good questions, Bill. This is exactly why we go through each individual employee every year mm -hmm. versus saying we're going to just add on whatever the negotiated increases were, right, right? and just add on the health insurance. It, that's why you mm -hmm. see these numbers start to fluctuate annually versus we just tack it on. Okay, okay so just to kind of piggyback on that, we... we the budget for 24 was for a 0.6 music at 20,000, and now it's at 0.4 for 33. Now my sense is is that we we were budgeting for 0.6, and then we went down to 0.4 at the late version of this budget, and we of 24. Yes. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know, it's going. Yeah. Okay. We're so really getting a lot out of it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just am trying to reconcile those no, numbers in my. Ahead. So really, 24 probably is at a point four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Uh, question was on world language. What's what are we doing here? Nothing right now because we haven't found one. Right. But we're going to go from one day a week to two days a week. So it's not split between the buildings. <clears throat> and I think the board, some members of the board, were, were encouraging that to, to take place. So. Uh, Appreciate that. And the definition of world language is? Any world language that we feel like could yeah. give our kids cultural experience. Yeah. Right. Like we really haven't limited it. Yeah, and it, right. it, if you're more familiar with the term foreign language, the world, world language is more, and more inclusive, right? It's not just about languages that are spoken in other countries. These are about languages that are spoken in our country, right? So they're not necessarily foreign to us. It also can include American Sign Language. Mm -hmm. American what? Sign Language. Yeah. I th you know, I think the exposure of multiple languages is does better actually than just concentrating on like one language as a elementary child. I mean, you guys are the experts. I don't know, but it would just seem that like if they were exposed to ASL, they were exposed to Spanish, they were exposed to Chinese, um, it would really provide the <coughs> kids with some great culture. Yeah. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of different models out there depending on sort of timing and. Yeah. Um, schedules that I think you could, that would work um, and it could be beneficial for kids. Mm -hmm. I like it. Thank you. <clears throat> Robert. Um, with regard to the world language, if you are unable to find someone as, as you have so well done in, in uh, other areas, can you augment with um, artists in residence or some other method to bring bring that yes. into the school? Yeah. Yeah, we were piloting a program in one of our districts. I gotta find out how that's going in Mandarin. You have a sense on for, it? Oh uh, yeah. I think we did it through I don't I don't think After it got a, I don't think it got a really good um, robust tryout. It didn't? No, I think there wasn't enough signed up, so got I think it. we have to figure out a different okay. delivery Just method. we have been starting to try to <laughs> figure out if they're or other approaches, but okay, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> uh, any other questions for uh, regarding the budget? Okay, thank you for your work on this, guys. Yeah, thanks, Tara. And I'm going to skip over to Jihad. So I'll be on in a few minutes, Tara. Okay. Okay, great.
great. So uh, we will now uh, circle back to six, the celebration of learning literacy in the upper elementary. Yep. So we have a video of a uh, um, direct instruction lesson in our fourth grade. And when this student started mid-year last year, he was a non-reader. Um, he didn't want to be filmed, which is why you see our teacher, and she is at a parent-teacher conference right now. <laughs> I don't see her, but she sent uh, this quote from both her and uh, the student, saying that the student has been working with direct instruction corrective reading programs since we've piloted it. He could not read or sound out any words when we began, and this is the growth he's been able to show in the last year. He's not interested in showing his face, but he wants everyone to know. I really like the new reading program, and I can actually read a book independently now. I like that I was able to learn to read. Um, and then Miss H, or Natalie, goes on to say, he has shown a lot of persistence and is so eager to advance further each day and even asks uh, when it's his turn to read with her. Nice. So, um, oh, that's great. This is like a five-minute clip of him going through the lesson just so you can see what this looks like in upper elementary. What sound? Mm. What sound do those two letters make? Uh, e. Okay. Neat. Yes. Neat. All right. Um, touch the first word in part three. What word? Um, came. 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 Remember the E is going to help it say its name. So what word again? Came. Came. Next word. What word? Gave. Yes, gave. Next word. What word? Make. Yes, make. Next word. What word? Plants. Look at that one again. Think. What word? Get Plates. ready. Plates. Plates. Next word. What word? Here. Yes, here. Okay. Now we're going to go to part four. Catch the first word. That word is your. What word? Your. Spell your. Get ready. Y-O-U-R. What word again? Your. The next word is other. What word? Other. Spell other. Get ready. O-T-H-E-R. Uh, the next word is answer. What word? Answer. Spell answer. Get ready. A-N-S-W-E-R. Okay. Uh, the next word is care. What word? Care. Spell care. Get ready. C. A-R-E. Yes. The next word is boards. What word? Boards. Spell boards. Get ready. B-O-R-A-R. Starting. Yep. Start over. B-O-A-R-D-S. Okay. Uh, and the next word is broken. What word? Broken. Spell broken. Get ready. B-R-O-K-E-N. Yes. The next word is table. What word? Table. Spell table. Get ready. T A. Ooh, reading. So, what's the title? Champ at the. Can. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna read a little bit. Um. Remember to follow along with your finger and read loudly. So, um, so champ at the camp. What do you think this story is going to be about? You don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out. Let's do it. <laughs> follow along with your finger. A man. What word now? Lean. Lean. Yes. Champ went down a road. Good. A man named Champ went down a road. Okay. He came to a camp. He stopped at and Good. said, I... to work 
but I need to eat. Good. Okay, so um, go back to he stopped, and I want you to say that as smoothly as you can. He stopped and said. He, wait, where, right here. No, he stopped and said, I hate to work, but I need to eat. There you go. So I will see if I can get a job at the camp. So Champ went to the ruins How who? Who? Who ran the Champ said, Can I work at this camp? I can do. Nice. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. Wow. He's made that progress in how much time? Uh, he started last January, so not even a full year. Wow. Well. Yeah. So it's truly an example of where. That's great. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the celebration of learning? Um, just remind me again, and uh, Donna Gallant's role. Am I so correct that not only is she guiding them? direct instruction ever here and in Rochester, but also helping elsewhere, or what's... So her role with us is she's yes. our literacy interventionist here in Stockbridge. Yeah. Um, and that's part-time, and then she works in other school districts coaching and working with Janie Feinberg. Okay, and you have a different person in Rochester that's the same, same role? Right, there's a literacy interventionist in Rochester, yes. And are they doing basically the same? Uh, I mean, their uh, caseload and the groups of kids they see are different. They're different, but I mean, are they using the same Everybody's using material? direct and yeah. instruction, yep. Thank you. And just to clarify, that was our 456 literacy teacher in Rochester, Miss H, that wasn't an interventionist. Wow. Literacy. Teacher, teacher, she wasn't. Yeah. Most is an intervention, so right. that's it's two different so things. She, right. So she works with all four, five, six students on literacy. Oh, okay. Versus a literacy interventionist just works with specific students. Oh, okay. Yep. We're learning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay. Great. Is there um, any other questions or comments? Okay. Well, then we'll move on to um, the principal fall 2023 academic data report. Yeah, first we'll start with the principal's report before we go into oh. data. It's kind of merged yes. into one, but um, just a couple additions to the report. We are in the middle of parent-teacher conferences right now for the fall. So um, those started last Wednesday and we'll go through this Wednesday and um, parents were able to sign up for slots to meet, meet with all the students, teachers, um, and some, some grade levels students are going with to show what they're learning about, and in other grade levels it's direct meeting um, with, between parent and classroom teacher. Um, so those are ongoing right now, and then I will share on Wednesday, all our sixth graders from both Rochester and Stockbridge are traveling to White River Valley High School to see their um, fall performance. Uh, murders, murder in the air. Murder in the air. Thank you. H e i r. Oh. <laughs> and it's a who done it. It's a little bit of a clue. Like the audience has to solve. Who did oh, it. cool. Um, <laughs> so they're doing a performance during the day, and all the sixth graders were invited to go try that out. That's great. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this. Um, I, I encourage anybody watching our uh, public to go and read these reports. Uh, Lindy really talks very intensely about what our MTSS leadership team and our target support teams and our 
universal support teams and our intense support teams, the work that they have been doing and what they um, and what they do. And so I, I definitely would encourage the, you know, the public to, to read this. So um, you really Absolutely. get a good behind the scenes. Yeah, and then the last thing I'll highlight is uh, on the 20th of October, we did a fall field day with both oh, yes. buildings K through six. Um, all the students came over. Everybody was here in Stockbridge. We had lunch together. Um, it was raining, so we skipped recess and went right to the games. <laughs> um, and the most popular were tug of war and then trying to eat a donut off a string. Mm -hmm. It's always entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, but they had a great time, and that's by grade level. So all the K students from both Rochester and Stockbridge together are together, and vice versa. So it kind of divides them up from their normal. Nice. Groups. Yeah. That's great. great. about it unless people have questions just about that part and then we can talk about that no that's it's exciting that uh, the Rochester Stockbridge are doing a um, virtual book club yeah I think that's a really really that cool idea too very cool I love that yeah it's so uh, mm -hmm. definitely um, that's wonderful um, okay does anybody have any uh, questions or comments um, for Lindy on her, her report <laughs> No. Okay. Incredible. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then moving on to our academic fall data. Um, so you have in front of you kind of page one shows um, some test window, like some score windows, just so you're familiar. So well below anything in red is first to the 39th percentile. Uh, below expected is 40. 40th to 59th per, uh, percentile, expected is 60th to 79th percentile, percentile, and above is 80 to 99th percentile. And then um, scale score, which this will be important when we go to the next um, couple pages because it helps give you a range um, of where students are at. But and So the percentile score is 1 to 39 percent of what? The students, the entire class, the everybody. Right. So it rank, So if you look at that definition to kind of summarize the second one down, see where it's okay. the percentile score, right? So it's ranking students among their peers, completing okay. the test in the same test window this year. Um, Just so it's Rochester or all like at, no, national, nationally, whoever right. took this test. Okay. And so it's not just how many questions they answered, right? Like percentage, correct? It's actually that. Um, <coughs> If a kid's in the 30th percentile, it means they did better than 29% of the students that are their age that took the test during the same time. Okay. test window as theirs. Does that make sense? Yep. Make more sense? That's a good Yes, question. thank you. I think it's, I think it's important, too, because you see that that yellow window, right, is it extends on both sides of the 50th percentile. Mm -hmm. um, and, right, like, we, we want all our kids to be up, right, up getting toward, as close as they can. But 50th percentile is still, right, like, that is um, the right, national. The national, or average. So um, when we're talking about sort of the most, like, where we're focused our most catching up to do, it's really looking at those students who are well below that 1 to 39. Um, and then, and then, really trying to serve the kids' needs in, you know, yellow, blue, and, and green, mostly through universal instruction with some other, some other um, additional yeah. needs as needed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you go to the next page, you're going to see our mathematics. And we're going to start off kind of with our scale score average. And the, the unique piece about this in terms of how you read this chart, right, is so Grade one in fall of 2022, their skilled score was at 534. You want to go at an angle to follow them. Oh, right. Okay. Because they've moved up. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of the, sh there's no easy way to write that direction. Right. <laughs> um, so fall 2023, their skilled score is 631. So we're trying to make sure that as we go up on each, so then if we look at grade two and we go over at an angle to fall 2023, we want to make sure that each group is growing. Yep. In general, which they are, just some are faster growth rates than others on that. Um, so you do see each group improve from last fall to this fall, which is essentially what this bottom um, graph shows you is our rate of growth and how quickly we're growing. We look at the bottom in mathematics, and here we want to see each cohort growing 
one or higher because that means they're closing gaps, right? So the, the national growth rate average okay, is to be at a 1.0, but we, because we know most of our cohorts started off below mm -hmm. um, meeting expectations for their grade level, we want their rate of growth to be higher. To get to up. make sure we're closing any gaps that existed up there. Um, and so for the most part, we are moving along on that. The other thing to note about this, so this compares it from last fall to this fall, that bottom chart as well does. Okay. okay so it's, um, and it's only kiddos who tested with us last fall to this fall. So like if they weren't a student that was with us this time last fall when we tested, they're not included in this okay. growth rate because there's nothing to compare. So this, data -wise. so like this grade two, right. uh, you are comparing it to grade one of 22, 23. Yes, exactly. That they increased. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. That makes perfect sense. Yep. So we're definitely making the right amount of progress or grade three um, can make a little bit more but we're in the right direction if you flip to page three of this this is where you're getting kind of probably something you're a little more familiar with the top is showing us who's meeting and exceeding expectations for the fall and what you'll notice is we were at 75 percent of our students meeting or exceeding um, in the spring and I'm not even going to do <coughs> quick math. And now we're at about 50% of our students um, meeting or exceeding. And that is down a little bit, but that's because we're being tested on new information, right? Like that group of kids in kindergarten, now as first graders are being tested on beginning of the year first grade information. So they may not have all those skills. It's not that we necessarily um, lost information over the summer. Sometimes that can be the common mistake. Um, and then um, we also break it out by grade level there as well as just our domains or our um, focus skill areas or proficiencies uh, within math. And so our two focal points coming out of this, so we spent our October 13th in service as a staff with this data coming up with an action plan. And our two focal points are really number and operations in base 10 and number and operations and fractions and just um, to give you a comparison of where kiddo our proficiency was last year in those two areas and number and operations um, and fractions 26 percent of the population was in the red and 40 percent was in the yellow so we see a little bit of a gain that we've made there in a year and in number and operations in base 10, 30% was in red and 32% was in yellow. So we're making some slow gains in those areas. We made some other jumps, um, but those are still the two focal points because those are such foundational skills that we don't want kids leaving. Like number and operations in base 10, you really don't want to leave fourth grade in the red because that just creates such a huge hole later on. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> one of the ways um, that we're focusing this on, like even more specifically, is building students' additive reasoning, so ability to automatically recall our addition facts and subtraction facts. <laughs> yeah. And then um, also in making sure that students by the end of third grade know all their multiplication facts or their multiplicative reasoning, mm -hmm. because then you can't build on those right. after that. What about expressions and equations? So that's a, a sixth grade skill that we're really working on, but um, until we have some of the other foundational skills first, gotcha. really um, necessary, that's starting to get into some of that pre-algebraic mm -hmm. thinking. So that expressions and equations is only sixth grade. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. Number of see students. the different yeah. students number of students assessed in it. So anywhere that's 17, that's really our sixth grade population okay. that was assessed in that. Um, and then counting and cardinality is only in our kindergarten. Yep. And then there's overlap of multiple grades after that. Mm -hmm.
Anybody have any math questions before we go on to <laughs> literacy? Just because it's a lot. But basically, you're reporting that we're going in the right direction. We are, we are making progress in the right direction. Yes. That's great. Absolutely. I had a question for Anna. When I was looking at this material, I mean, <coughs> hate to say how much time I spend on it, and my head still spins, and I'm <laughs> confused. But um, when we go back to our goals, our academic goals, one in mathematics and one for English language, are going to 2025. Um, I was reading the numbers, uh, we were talking about 50% and then the benchmark numbers, the starting numbers, and I'm reading them as, as kind of SU numbers, starting numbers, and by the time we get to 2025, the SU will, are, are going to reach these, these goals. Does that also mean that for each district that we're also based on the District's beginning number is going to reach those goals. Um, in other words, should we be, because uh, the district results are different than ours, and, uh, and I like to think uh, what I'm reading that our, we're very, very strong. So, um, so that's a clear question. In other words, are the goals SU, that's what we're going to pledge to meet by 2025, or is it each district? going to try to meet, say, meet those goals as well. I mean, I think the way the goals were adopted, they were adopted at the SU, yeah. right, at the SU yep. level. I think that's the um, I mean, that's the one that makes the most sense for that body to be, you know, talking about and, yep. assess, and assessing. Um, I, I will say, right, those goals were all based on something called the Smarter yes. Balance yes. Uh, <laughs> Assessment Consortium, and so E even the not like I, we can't even translate those numbers over. I yeah. sat trying right like the the scale scores don't even they're not even on the same range no. anymore. So um, I think the the um, the goal behind those like the goals that still exist the actual numbers will have to yeah. be readopted redone. Yeah, to we're figure talking out about the average is proficient or better. Right. Yes. Uh, regardless of the the, the 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 measurement tool, that's yes. they're still our. Goals. I think so. Yes, I think so. Um, and, and the level one uh, percentage, we were shooting to cut that in half. So yeah. that still seems to me. I think I th yes. I think uh, the the sentiment behind all of them yeah. makes complete sense. And I'm sorry to take this no. thing, but while I think I'm on a roll here, the, the third goal was on um, K through two. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent of our kids were going to achieve uh, proficient. I think. Foundational skills, that was the terminology, and I'm not sure any of us have asked you, are the foundational skills the same as um, math and ling English language arts, or is it something different that we haven't seen measured to this date? No, they're with, yeah, they're within those content areas. It just, right, content. Those students are not assessed on the state assessment, so we have to use other tools to get like at that. tracking our progress. Like track my progress <coughs> is one of them, the dynamic indicators of basic, basic early literacy skills, also known as DIBBLES, is another way that we get at those. Um, and the curriculum-based measures that we use in our math program is, a, is another another way. So when we look at our, if you look at our proficiencies, you'll see uh, like counting and cardinality, that's a foundational skill. I think we get a pretty good read on that here in Track My Progress. Um, I think we do need to use Dibbles as an additional piece for literacy to get at really those, um, those skills around decoding that we want to make sure all kids have. Um, so that's why we use some other tools there. All right, thank you. Sure. Are there any other questions on this math portion of the report. No, the only thing I'll say is that um, of the 33% of students that are in the yellow in math, about half of them are scoring between the 50th to the 59th percentile. So we're very close yeah. and anticipate that hopefully we'll make a, a good, healthy gain in January when we do this again. But because that's a math equation in and of itself. Half of the 33% that scored. Um, moving on to English language arts, which is on page, it starts on page four. I just want to point out again, this is where, again, we go at this diagonal. 
So when we look at grade one from last fall, we see their scale score is 466. And then their scale score this fall is 480, or 584, excuse me, upside down reading. Um, and it keeps going at a um, diagonal with our now third graders making some of the greatest gains. Um, yeah. It, where their scale score last fall was 589 and now it's 788, mm -hmm. this yeah. fall, which is great. Um, so making some good jumps in the right direction um, on our scaled score. And again, when you flip over to page five and you see this progress rate, again, it's only kiddos that were with us last fall <laughs> to this fall. Um, and you're not gonna see kindergarten or first grade yet? Right. Uh, we did not assess. Because we didn't do yeah. K-1 to start with. Not in the fall. Not we now in the have fall. done it in the fall now. now. we do. Um, again, we want that growth rate to be higher than 1.0, and we are um, well above that in each grade level making gains, um, which is great to see. Um, yeah, it's well above the one. It's well, well above the one, one, and that's what we needed to see based on our fall data last year. Uh, when we made some switches after we saw that. So 38% of our students in K through six are meeting or exceeding the standards um, in English language arts. Uh, we're closing that gap. Um, the other thing that I would say, my notes in two different places, I'm speaking up very smart. Um, when you look at this by domain, our, um, and that's on page six, um, our focal point was reading foundational skills in our instruction and last year at this time 58 percent of our students were in the red now it's only 28 um, percent and 17 percent of our students are, were in the yellow and it's 31 percent so we're headed in the right direction um, it continues to be a focal point because if you cannot decode you're not going to be able to understand what you're reading um, and to be able to do the other pieces. We're still at an area that we're working on adding to is our vocabulary acquisition and use, which comes with lots of practice. Um, so while it wasn't a focal point last year, um, we did see some improvements in that area as well. But um, out of our October 13th in-service, again, those were the two areas that we're gonna continue um, to press on. Questions? About any of this? As far as I can tell, the, um, <coughs> the goal of cutting the level one and a half, uh, we're well on our way to that objective, um, which is yeah. really, 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 really hard. Yeah. And, and we heard, we saw tonight on Celebrations of Learning, right. an example of that. Right. We're getting there, that's for sure. Great. Is there any other questions or comments for um, Lindy on this uh, academic data report? Okay. Thank you. Uh, the policy Committee. Um, Patrick's on the policy committee, right? <laughs> and so, I don't have any inside information on that. Do yeah, you? and uh, since Jamie's not here, I guess we don't think we, there's a, Yeah, right, the, the last updates at the SU wide board would be the same. We have, that, they haven't met since. So there's a big tracking sheet of all of the policies and what mm -hmm. um, sort of what way, what order in which we might tackle the revisions of them. I don't think there's any new policies right now. So I think it's more of a taking a, um, a lay of the land on all of, on all of that. Which is great because one of our goals, um, or one of the things we've discussed <laughs> in, in our board is to get more familiar with all the policies. And I think yeah. actually using the policy committee as a tool to mm -hmm. help us mm -hmm. um, with that review and bring them to us, I think is very appropriate and will work out really great. Okay, great, let's move on to 8-2 uh, board protocol score sheet. So this is a sheet um, that we filled out and gave to Bill to uh, 
tally, shall we say, um, at our uh, retreat. Uh, these were and these are questions that were directly that are evaluating how well we feel we've done. The board has done with um, the governance principles and our pro specific protocols. And then there's some uh, good comments at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to let Bill take it away because he's been up close and familiar with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we'd love to have. Um, all great, 100% all great, but we don't walk on water just like uh, anybody else in this world does. Um, my reading of this is that we're doing well. Um, we've got uh, some that are, are are less than great that shows that we've got uh, opinions, feelings, uh, a sense that we could do better. And I think all of us should just look at this, kind of try to think about why that those scores might be not to the great and just be aware of that uh, and to be open to members of the board that want us to either refocus or, um, or pay more attention to some of these areas. It, they're, um, they're important. The principles is just the, that's, the, that's what guides us and the protocols is how we behave and how we respect each other and I I think um, the nice thing about this board is that we do and we try to practice what we preach and we learn from each other. Finally the comments I thought is a very valuable part of this exercise. It gives specifics uh, suggestions on strengthening our board going forward and I took several of those um, in my draft for the goals, for goals um, which we're going to discuss later. And I just, uh, is anybody on the board want to comment about um, the results of the, the board protocol evaluation and uh, or uh, going forward? Well, uh, from looking at this, um, like you said, it. Um, looks like we're, we're doing doing okay, we're doing well. Um, I do you know, immediately see the number one uh, board governance principles establish a vision, create policies, and ensure accountability. Um, and so I see that as an area that we can work work on. Um, yeah, we had a goal to do that, to revisit, and that's one of the things we didn't get to. Yeah. So I think this was a reflection of we, all, we didn't do what we hoped to do. Yeah. Uh, we never can do everything. Uh, but it's, I think, uh, to revisit it doesn't mean to change it. It means to look at it again. Is this our vision? Is this our mission statement that represent what we're trying to do? So I've tried to incorporate that again in the, the goals uh, going forward. Excellent. And um, I definitely. <laughs> I feel that um, vision and mission statement work is done well in the, the retreat type setting where it's an open conversation and um, at the end of our retreat last time we had talked about you know we had more work that we wanted to do and so we felt that maybe we should try to meet again um, and I think yeah. that would be appropriate to try to meet again on um, you know early winter here at the turn of the um, turn of the year. Uh, you know, specifically to uh, revisit and take a look at that um, mission and vision statement. So um, maybe the uh, b between now and our next board meeting, we can um, come up with some dates that maybe. Like yeah, the minutes I had for the retreat had uh, there was a consensus to have a second retreat. Yeah. Um, and they were we're tentatively um, appointed towards January, the, the turn of the new year, yeah. I know, depending on the budget and everything else. But I think it's a reflection that we, all of us, learn from and appreciate the ability to talk within a retreat setting. And, uh, Absolutely. So I think we all, and I, we might want to add that to a future Absolutely. agenda item, whatever it is, just so that we Absolutely. don't lose, I think lose sight of wanting to do that. I think that uh, by next, definitely at next, 
in our December meeting, we should set a date. Um, okay. Uh, is there any other uh, comments that the board wants to make on these, uh, on this score sheet, scorecard? Did we want to revisit 7-4? Okay, well, um, we can look back to 7-4 if there was any policy committee update um, oh, yeah. as we didn't. Yeah, so the policy committee is reviewing, we're going to review every policy that we have on the books over the next year and a half. Uh, we started by reviewing personnel policies this past month, um, and we were able to get through three. Um, and there will be some changes to at least one of them that will be coming forward <coughs> for a reading here and probably your December meeting. Uh, and so that's how we'll go about that work, um, is that we'll review policies, I'll bring forward edits and revisions based on those reviews, then they'll come in front of boards for one reading, that's all they'll need because they're revisions. Um, and so you'll start to see some revised policies coming forward starting in December. Great. So yeah, that's the update. Okay. It's a good process. Uh, if you're interested, I strongly encourage any and all board members who are invited to join that committee. Um, it's at 5.30 prior to the full board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very wise time to have capture people. <laughs> yeah, that's worked pretty well for us, actually, having it piggyback. And when, you know, we, I, I'll bring it up at this next meeting just because there's a lot of work happening at the committee level. I'm going to actually see if they're willing to start at five, if at least if there's right, enough of a group that there. can start at five, because there's enough work around the revision process that I feel like we can stay pretty busy for an hour. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, what comes out of the policy committee. Um, all right, uh, jump back to 8-3, uh, board goals for 23-24. So the first, uh, the first sheet is with uh, revisions uh, already made. The second is uh, with the, the revisions underlined so you can see what had changed. Ah, this was the one that I had a comment on, okay. Um, so in uh, <coughs> the, uh, the in the financial management portion of this goal, uh, enrollment and tuition revenue growth, uh, recruit, retain, and build social capital, um, develop and promote our SUD's individual and unique identity. The measure would be uh, enrollment and tuition revenues up and tuition payments down. I uh, Clarify for me how tuition payments would be down because I don't believe that for our tuition students we have any control over tuition payments. Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, I think it probably could be written clearer. By tuition payments down, it doesn't mean that the, the cost per student that we're being charged is going down. It means the number of our students that uh, have chosen to go elsewhere outside of our SU, that that number of students that go elsewhere, which we pay for, um, goes down. So the example uh, I use uh, is the number of kids that graduated this June going to Middlebury. Okay. Um, each student going to Middlebury costs us in our budget approximately $20,000. So by this goal, what we're trying to say is, okay, if we could reduce that number, every student that, we, that stays within the SU We'll be saving that tuition cost of twenty thousand dollars. We just Plus, you still pay yes. the White River Unified District. We're paying the White River Unified District, but it's staying staying within um, 
Just we want to make certain that right. everyone understands. Staying within the SU. <laughs> it's not 20. Right. <laughs> and that, that money can be used to support the SU um, administrative staff. It can be used for any number of things. And well, the, the other thing the, is that tuition payment is still going to, not to the SU. It's going to the uh, White River School District. Okay. Um, and that helps them keep their, to, to offset increases, in inflationary increases, like 16% for health insurance, for instance. So every student that we can keep in, wherever that student is going within the SU, it helps that SU district um, keep their cost to their taxpayers down. And um, it's an enormous challenge um, if we're going to be able to sustain our ability to have the, the best education that we can deliver if our enrollments are declining, uh, the cost per student is increasing, therefore, by definition. That's the other part of this piece. One is, is trying to recruit kids to come to the RSU, recruit kids to come to our site. And that's what we're really looking at here. Uh, the second thing is every um, student that leaves, our cost per student automatically goes up. If you've got 10 students and you get a hundred dollars, the average cost per student is ten dollars. If you have, you lose a student, then the average cost for nine students is more than ten dollars. And that's where uh, the state, there's great sensitivity, and that's why they have these caps on cost per student. And remember that we used to have to do that, and they've now removed that. That's going to come back with declining enrollments because it's going to be almost mission impossible to keep cost per students down if there's not enough students. And the national uh, surveys on enrollment say that between now and 2030 nationally, enrollments are going to go down 8%, and in Vermont, 8%. So, you've, so how do we offset that so that we can have the cost per students reasonable and um, and fill our classrooms and get our job done. And that's where um, the emphasis on trying to recruit kids, to get kids here because we're not only good, but they, their parents know that we can meet their needs. Um, and then keep the kids within the SU um, is just, um, it's just huge. Um, and it's, we're doing a lot of that now but all my readings that over the summer are that we've, it's got to be much more focused mm -hmm. and targeted. Um, and um, so I, and I'm quite honestly, I'm advocating this for the SU board too, because it's, um, as I've said to other people, the, the private sector model, when you have a declining market, there's two models. One is, um, you cut, cut, cut. Efficiency, okay? Um, and they can finesse whether the product is, is declining or not, and they just keep the, the bottom line up until they can sell the company. That's the, that's the, to me, that's a death spiral. That, we can't do that. The, the other one is we, through our marketing and quality product, we increase our market share. But it takes a concerted effort. Um, and that's where it's a little different because we're so used to doing everything we've done tonight to make sure that things are happening well. Um, but if we can't get uh, grow our, um, our student body, then it's going to be more and more difficult to have budgets that are attainable and, so uh, maybe to clarify, rather yep. than tuition payments down, it would just be uh, retain more in-district yep. uh, tuition students. Yes. Um, I would like to it'd be interesting to see some real numbers on that, though, of the different costs to our district. Or, you know, to, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and that's but. where part of this effort is, is that we don't have those numbers. And part of this effort is 
to generate those numbers so that we it can guide us further mm -hmm. um, on uh, on this effort. And okay. and it's going to be something that's going to need support from the administration. Uh, no question, we can't do it alone. Robert. So just to clarify, I mean we're by um, we get rev revenue up or and attract students. We're talking about students that have choice. Yep. They can choose to elementary come, students. That elementary have students yep. that can come here yep. or go go elsewhere. And there. Um, and how how about how does it factor in for homeschooling? How does that? We lose this student. Right. right. I do think that that is an area that that as at least in central office and some principals we've been talking about is looking at just getting a better sense of the why. Um, and, you know, I know in, in some districts we have principals starting to pilot this notion of regular communication with homeschool families, that desire to, like, just putting out there opportunities that we have within the district mm -hmm. for families to participate in. Mm -hmm. And looking to see if there are, you know, Certainly, too, we have we have lots of students across the SU who will participate part time in our programming, and homeschool the rest. But we still get to count them as a percentage. That's what I was wondering: is do so we that get? That is certainly a piece of this. Puzzle. If they participate to a certain extent. Yes, we do get to count them. Yeah, yes. it's, to, it's to help uh, them. The, the uh, there was a recent article that said uh, growth in educational uh, enrollment. And uh, the highest growth was in homeschooling. Yeah. Um, that was like 7% or 8% up. The second highest was private schools. That was like 3 or 4%. Public schools wasn't, weren't up, they were down 2 or 3%. So, I mean, you're seeing our competition. And, uh, and this is, um, they're all good choices. We want our parents and our townspeople to, to choose what's best for their child. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't uh, reinforce what we're doing well and reach out to them so they totally understand um, what we've got going. And so that's, uh, that's why this is here. Other comments? Uh, chair, uh, uh, tear it up. This is my best shot and I, I don't own any of this. Um, and I guess I suggest that we spend more than one night on this um, and get everybody thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that makes that's, it. You, you highlighted one that was was new. Um, and um, and capital facilities, I, um, I think it's fairly straightforward, but the language is different than our current goal there. Um, and a third one is under goals number four. No, excuse me. Communication. No, excuse me. Um, goal number one. Um, right now our goal is uh, academic achievement and we've talked about that and we've got a reporting system that comes in the fall, the winter, and the spring for, um, for mathematics and for English language arts. Um, um, the superintendent has a goal to expand that not only in the academic area but the social emotional area so that we have a, a way to measure how are we doing. And so this is a reflection of that goal um, which will, uh, is going to come down from the administration uh, to us um, later this academic year. But it's to, to highlight that we have a dual function academically, but we also have social emotional. The kids will, <coughs> we're all well in this. And so uh, this is a suggestion that, that, our, that we broaden our goal beyond academics to how are we doing social emotionally? And that's, uh, that's my attempt to, to articulate that. JC or Cynthia, do you have uh, 
Yeah, I, I am still on my f phone. I didn't switch the computer. Uh, and I was just, uh, I don't see, I think we should add to this the, the advertising piece. <coughs> Sorry, baby. It's okay, we like um, hearing the baby, so that's fine. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the, it's cute hearing the baby, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Advertising. I just, I like, yeah, I think you should add that to, add to this, like maybe to the beginning, like advertising, uh, PR, Facebook. That's um, that's meant to be covered under enrollment and um, enrollment and tuition revenue growth. Recruit, develop, and promote our sud's individual and unique identity. You know, it doesn't say how we're going to do it, and what you're saying is we need to market better more precisely, more focused. So that's kind of built right into that goal. And we could be more explicit about that, but that's absolutely part of how we're going to keep our uh, recruit and retain so our enrollments can be as high as possible. And uh, so it's I can make that more explicit. I certainly can. The other thing I want to mention that was came from the feedback from the protocol, our self-assessment was um, somebody suggested developing an RSUD board handbook, and uh, yeah, and I thought that was a terrific idea. We have for for new members, we've got a handbook for uh, which is very very well written and everything else. Um, but I took it from this as saying, this idea is that we've got specific stuff that is relating to our said that yeah. could be helpful to us. So I have that down under this draft, under number five, under board governance. Um, and in that, um, years ago, actually, um, uh, a board member started a calendar. Yep. And I think it would be great to have, I mean, just as a general calendar so that you know, we know <clears> that these are when budget season is. This is kind of the progression of the budget. This is when uh, we have our annual meeting. Um, you know, just some of the things that we know is coming up. Yeah. Um, gotcha. But like I said, it doesn't have to be all the nitty gritty. You know, like Tara provides us with a really nice, of like all the little nitty gritty that's happening. This is more of just like an overview. You know, like, like the retreat, start planning for the retreat. Another thing I was thinking is maybe we could have a small committee kind of revamp this a little bit based on what we talked about in our retreat and what we're talking about tonight and then bring it back. Do you think that would be helpful? I'm all for it. I just, this is. Yeah, um, I just uh, came up with the first draft. So I love it. Um, no, I, I greatly appreciate the work that you've done on it so far. Uh, JC, is that something you're interested in? You and Bill. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking it. before coming to this meeting. I'm like, we should get you know a little bit of work done on this because I think it's easy to bring something like this, this huge thing, to the board, and then we're like, uh, yeah, right. It's I, just where to start, you know. I agree. So, um, Bill, I think it would be helpful to get more work done with this committee. Um, Bill, is that something you're willing to work with JC on? Absolutely. Is that yeah, sound on, okay to you? We, we uh, worked together with, um, yep. last year. That I think that would be really great. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Great. All right, any other specifics on um, the goals? And and really, that's what you're working on is the goals, because the mission and vision statement uh, we need to. Well, I mean, you can you can start talking about, but I think it's something that we need to do at a retreat. Goals and, to start with, yeah. and and really, can, yeah. you know, maybe you can have some ideas, of course, and but but really, what we're going to try to accomplish is the goals for this. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, um, then let's move on to the board uh, survey of the community, um, and that's what I printed out. And I don't—it's not in our. Yeah, it's on the packet. In our packet, it. okay. Um, we got it later. You what? We received that later. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, Let me just see if I get his two copies. They wouldn't have them. We've got one if you want to both look at it. So the idea, um, the idea is really to. Um, Lindy, have you seen it? No. Okay. Can we, can I can make some more? copies. Can we make that? would be helpful. I'd like those guys to see it too. Is it just this one sheet right yeah, here? Yeah, just one yeah. sheet. So it, we're, um, so the um, proposed focus groups, we have the parents, the RSUD teachers, administrators, support staff, the RSUD board, and RSUD students. Um, the survey that's been put together so far um, is open-ended questions, which, um, you know, I really like. Um, what are your school's greatest strengths? Um, and the idea is to, to get community uh, student um, feedback on, um, you know, what some of our, our community's goals are for our school and what's our, some of our, you know, with their, <coughs> or yeah, I guess goals. Um, I don't know how we would get this out to everybody or the cost of getting it out and the cost of returning it out. As you mentioned about a self-addressed stamped envelope, I don't, I mean, well, I just, I know. <laughs> um, We've done, um, so we're doing some surveying of folks right now for Portrait of a Graduate, which mm -hmm. are similar questions. Um, we've done it with a QR code in some districts. Okay, how's that work? You just take a picture of your, with your phone, and then you can submit it, the survey into the mm -hmm. Google form. Okay, so where's the QR code, though, I guess? It I goes on a page. Okay. Yeah. 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 And hung around town. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah. and that's what I was gonna say. So we put them around towns right now to get information back. One district's doing it right now for their school colors and mascot that they're looking to revise. And so I think that's one angle you could do. Instead of having to mail it, you can mail a postcard and yeah. ask people to follow the QR code. I just want um, to be conscious of our the you, cost. You can mail up a little postcard and ask people to fill it out and turn it in. Centralized locations. If a QR code is complicated for folks, I'm not that techie, so I would be more apt to fill out a little postcard and drop it off somewhere mm -hmm. where my other half would do the QR code in a minute, right? I just keep in mind there's some folks that a QR code makes complete sense and is intuitive, and for me, it's not that intuitive. Like, I, I struggle with it. Um, so, you could provide both. And we've done mailers, like one-page mailers in other districts um, that are postcard size. I could get a quote. We could ask Kate to get us a quote for Rochester Stockbridge uh, to get a sense of what that would cost. My sense is with batch mailing, that way it's actually not, it won't be cost prohibitive. Yeah, because we do already have our and yeah. we can do the EDDM mailing mm -hmm. that just goes to every mailbox mm -hmm. in every rural room. Yeah, and we could get these boiled down into, like I said, a postcard size, I think, and ask people to, they could do it one of two ways, drop it off at some centralized locations and or do it through the QR code. Mm -hmm. hmm. Am I making sense? Yep. Okay. Is that what you were thinking, Bill? I like the questions personally. I also think it does hit on enough information that the board could then use to then have the conversation around the merger as is indicated via the articles of agreement. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't focus on it so much. No, I know you did, but I think on, it gets at the, the delivery mechanism, which is important, and, and those, um, and I'm somewhat out of date on. Uh, it might be. Well, that's why we all are working together. So that, that is correct. Thank gosh. Uh, uh, um, yes, 
And I what? thank Lindy for, because she, uh, this is basically her, her, yeah, her work talking. that I rephrased a couple of things, but um, um, I think would be helpful and for us going forward to hear. And it doesn't have to be everybody uh, in the community. And part of the things uh, which I just had some suggestions on the, who, who's going to participate here, whether that's the group that we want to or not, or whether I'm missing somebody, should this go to everybody in the community? Um, the focus to me on parents are the ones that have the most direct information mm -hmm. uh, on really what's went on, what happened, uh, and could give us the, the most feedback based on kind of direct interaction. Well, maybe um, we can send it home in like Friday folders or something. So, if there's such yeah, a Thursday um, folders, yeah. Th that Every would Thursday. be a thing there. Uh, I, I'm more than familiar with um, reaching out to to an entire or a, a sample set of the whole community. Um, in this case, I thought um, <coughs> it's open for discussion. I mean, it's just. Um, I think we'd get a lot of valuable stuff from, from the focus groups we talked about there. And I caught someplace, Lindy, that you were there was going to be some opportunity to hear from the kids or the older kids or something on this. I wasn't so suggesting our, this <coughs> mechanism. Yeah, but. I did mention it in my principal's report. Our two student representatives on the portrait of a graduate have run something similar. Um, they went to both all the kindergarten through sixth grade classrooms in both Rochester and Stockbridge and collected yeah. um, some of these same things. Yeah, we can get that. And so we'll have the benefit of that as well. Um, I do think, you know, as you're just talking about your these groups of mm -hmm. um, maybe as part of the survey, we can have them circle who they are. Are you a, a parent? Mm -hmm. Are you just a, a community member? Mm -hmm. Um, just so then we can have, you know, better, when we're looking at it and, when, yeah. and evaluating that's it, idea. Um, just because that, I mean, that's, that's the hard part with an un, unnamed survey. You don't know exactly which, what group is filling it out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bill, were you suggesting that we don't push it out to everybody? Um, um, I do think there's yeah, an opportunity I, 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 to I, I, engage I, I, with the greater community through this um, survey. Yeah, it just wasn't clear to me how we how we do that and get a, a random um, uh, uh, results. Um, so it's, it's and random. If it's really random, then you can it, it really helps you in interpreting the strength of the opinion. You know, um, so that's both size and that's also just a random distribution. Um, <coughs> so I don't know. I have a question on that. Well, um, also specifically, you, you mentioned at the you know annual me the annual meeting that people were amazed and didn't know the thing a lot of what we've been doing here, and so that always is hard to take a survey on people that maybe don't have all the information. Um, yeah, and that's part of this enrollment strategy. What I'm talking about is that getting that information out in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, as effective a fashion as possible. We're doing a lot of that now. Um, so I don't know, uh, Jamie. I don't have a. Uh, I could I could swing either way. Um, I mean, if it was going out to families, you'll get the information back quicker. We're going to have some steps to take to get it out to the whole community. Mm -hmm. Could it be, could we just like post it and tell people, like tell people to go to, go to your local, go to the local town clerk or your post office or go to the website and get it from the website or use the QR code or like, is that? You know, um, in, if we could, in Stockbridge, they, the town clerk's office seems to have a, a robo list that they email out meeting dates and information to. They email and text. Um, so I'm sure we could work with them on that. I'm not sure that Rochester uses the same tool. They seem to use Front Porch Forum more than they use. But we can message that. and say that yeah. this is available. Yeah, exactly. Places. So we could do that. It's not that hard. 
Um, Why don't yeah. we go it that way for now? Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so families. Yeah, that, that's a. Stockbridge does have that, and for the people that sign up, they get like um, the agendas of all the public meetings and the minutes of the public meetings and things like that. And if we could tap that, that would. Um, it's kind of a self-selected group that are interested in town government, but it still would be valuable as a, as a possibility that we. Well, and I think that. we could put it if we could have it someplace on the website that we could tap, you know, tell people to go to. Yeah, um, okay, so um, what do we do? We, are we good with these questions? Are we coming back to this yeah. next month? Where where are we at? I think the questions are need approval. It's just a question of how we do, uh, distribute them and get the answers back. Okay. Yes. I've worked on a number of these things within the SU, and here's my suggestion, I don't know how practical it is over time as a project, right? If I could do what I wanted to do, I would take the student survey results. I would then take this and give it to the parents, wait for that feedback, and see if the results from the parent survey gave you any hint about what you might ask the public in general. And then I would put it out. Hmm. Okay, it's kind of like two phases. That might be appropriate. But I haven't even seen the survey yet, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're pretty out. They look a lot like the portrait of graduate questions. I apologize. I think that that would be an appropriate way to go. I like that too. Let's let's start let's start with that step for this. Okay. How about Great. we just we'll take it from here and we'll Thank give you. it out to folks. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. Okay, then um, moving on to nine point one, appoint an endowment committee. Eight point five. Oh, eight point five temperature sensors for high school. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, you want to get approval to um, uh, basically install Wi-Fi connected temperature sensors throughout the. Um, the uh, high school building. Um, I've come. I mean, we can get up to 20 sensors, um, you know, for under $500. And um, what they do is, the, you set a, a range for each of them, and they email if there's email someone if if anything's out of range, and um, it could be me, or, or I can set it up to email me and other people. Um, and uh, so that's the first thing is just get general approval for that. Um, for us to purchase those? Uh, actually, we're. I think we. I got the commitment from um, from, from the re repurposing committee yeah. okay. to purchase them. So it's just approval to to, to do it, to do it to do it. And okay. then um, I think we're with uh, Lindy. We're we're. Um, there's also other things of. of Maybe uh, of arranging with the repurposing you know, volunteers to do walkthroughs periodically through the high school. Mm -hmm. Just uh, we're trying to re reduce the load on um, on Jesse. Okay. Uh, sounds good to me. Anybody have any um, comments or objections to? Uh, them going forward with putting sensors, Wi-Fi sensors, for in the high school. No, my only comment to Robert was just to make certain Ray was aware, so that they're not functioning. He's on top of it. Yep. He's aware. We talked. I know. I saw you. Okay. <laughs> Great. <coughs> good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Nine point one. Appoint an endow endowment committee. Um, so I had a meeting with Jamie, kind of trying to move forward on. Good. our endowment stuff and I would like to cr make a committee that um, is made up of uh, a couple board members maybe even community members um, to review 
um, how our funds have done over the year, you know, read those financial statements, and then to um, propose to the board how much uh, they feel would be appropriate for the um, for the principal to spend uh, each year. I'd like this. I was hoping this committee was something we could set up, and then every year at our repurpose their reorganization, we would just it would be on that list of of committee of members. So. Um, I would volunteer to be on it because I have a lot of that information, but I'm looking for help. <laughs> I'll, I'll volunteer. Okay. I'll volunteer. Excellent. So do we need to uh, make a you motion? Would, you would move to appoint the three of you. Okay. And then if you decide that you're going to have some public join the next meeting, the we board would them. appoint them. Yep. Okay. Great. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Myself, Amy Wilt, uh, Robert Mayer, and uh, Bill uh, Edgerton to a new endowment uh, committee. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? <laughs> Signify by saying aye. 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 I think it's a great aye. idea. Okay. Great idea. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, now, does I presume this? This committee has to abide by all the open meeting laws. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we'll have right. to do that. But if we can we'll, um, get a meeting set up, we can start chatting about it. And, and uh, moving forward, I think it's appropriate timing. And every year we'll do it early so that um, Lindy can use it in her budget. Um, OK. Uh, great. The yes. question are these endowments are managed by the um, by who by the so these are specific to the um, Rochester endowments because the Stockbridge endowments have their own management team they're managed by the um, trustees, of trustees of public funds but I don't see why we couldn't learn about them as part of this committee to, so we have an understanding. Uh, I think the immediate goal is to take a look at the Rochester Endowment. Um, They're not man managed by the, by the Rochester? Or trustees, or trustees. no. They're man they are in, uh, like, one's Morgan Stanley, and there's a financial advisor, and then, the, you okay. know, and so they are the responsibility of the Rochester, the as the our side board to okay. manage. Very good. So that'll be another component that we'll be looking at. Okay, great. Um, moving on to 10 new hires or resignations. Yep, our um, school nurse, Chelsea uh, Mayor, now Chelsea Hart, um, has resigned for um, family and personal reasons. Currently have a substitute nurse who's coming in for at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, and we have two applicants, and we'll have interviews later this week. Great. Okay, uh, is there any public comment? Okay. <laughs> Great, then um, we do have an executive session, so I... Just in one DMI. Lindy, uh, yes, and how do we do it with our two virtuals? It's fine. Okay, great. Um, I make a motion to enter executive session for a student matter. So move. Okay, we've exited executive session. Okay, I make a motion that we accept the um, the. Uh, uh, superintendent's um, recommendation on a student matter. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Great. Our next meeting is Monday, December 4th at 6 o'clock, not 5.30 as it says, at the Rochester campus. Uh, we will uh, discuss uh, future retreat dates, um, hopefully, at, the, at the, that meeting, so bring your calendars. 
Uh, and if there's any other um, future agenda items? <coughs> well, hopefully uh, Justine and I can get together and if we can come up with a, a draft too, I'd like to keep that going. The goals. Uh, Absolutely. And the goals. Um, also, I forgot to bring uh, our new book. <laughs> Oh, and, and Lydia has something for you too about summer music for kids. Um, but if I could, can you put them someplace um, so I could get them? Well, I was just thinking of sending an email, and each of you, if you're willing to provide me with your address, then I would deliver them to your. And because it's, um, if you're not comfortable with that, we can have a handoff situation, or I could give you three for Rochester and do three, but. I'm more than happy to deliver them, but you, you'll love the book. It has a bright red cover. It's about board governance, and it's something that now that we have kind of know the terminology and thinking, a lot of it should be reassuring and familiar, but we'll still be learning from this author. This author is very, very, very well regarded. It also isn't voluminous. Uh, we can get through it this year. I think there's only eight chapters or seven. So my request would be is... If it's okay with you, um, get so I could get you the book and ask you to read chapter one for our December meeting and have that on our, um, okay. if, if that's okay, along with the goals. And then the other thing is that, as you know, we were talking about um, it, it's the fifth year of a celebration of fact of the ARSA together. And part of that was kind of looking at um, the articles of agreement, and I started doing that. And um, just to give you one nugget, and that the best one yet was that um, part of it was uh, one of the appendices was estimated costs um, before the CLA um, factored in. They were projecting for um, the merger. Okay. And um, I just need one more year, which, if with your permission, I'd like to reach out to Tara. Uh, she has that document. I'm sure it's one of these books, but I don't have for Anyway, uh, the good news is that uh, uh, other than the first year, which is the year of consolidation, our um, cost um, are, are substantially below what was projected. Great. And so I'm, I'm still wading through all the appendices and I'd like to be able at some point, maybe as soon as December, to share what I've gleaned from it, and whether you, whether the board wants to do anything with this information or not, is up to the board. But okay. I thought it was it's just worthwhile. It's, it's it's certainly helping me to kind of go back in time. Okay. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Super great. Okay. If anybody has any future agenda items, just email me or Jamie. Um, otherwise, we'll. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Nice job. Aye. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job.